Hello everyone and thank you for your wonderful comments on the interviews with both Mike and Phil. Um, gathering from those comments it seems that you guys enjoyed watching the uh, two clips just as much as I did as, in doing, as doing them. Um, I can't do this clip without just quickly mentioning Boone Gould, obviously Friday was its second anniversary since his passing. Uh, whilst I probably don't expect Phil to watch this clip, John or Sarah Gould may well uh, see it. So uh, on behalf of everybody that uh, watches this clip, I'm sure you would all uh, want me to send um, well, our thoughts um, with the Gould family last uh, Friday. Uh, on saying that, now when I contacted Mike and Phil, I also uh, contacted uh, Wally, Wally Badaroo. Now, Wally's somebody I've only met uh, three times in the last four years. Um, he's a kind of slightly shyer guy, obviously, than Mike and uh, Phil. Um, so he has done a Q&A with me, but it's actually been done via email rather than Zoom. Um, just before we, I do the uh, Q&A, uh, that I'll read it out to you. Um, unfortunately, his wife passed away in about the last 10 days. And uh, funny enough, this picture uh, I've got of Wally at the 606 actually uh, captures Genevieve in the background there. So once again, our thoughts um, are with you, Wally. Um, so the first question I proposed to him um, was, I know you met Phil whilst uh, making pop music and M. What was it about him that uh, forged a relationship that's still going 40 years later? He said, I, I suppose one immediately knows when upon meeting someone there is something about the vibes, the affinities, uh, the renaissance, the individual memories, the effects that never lies. It's all there, um, it is or it isn't, and with Phil I had the same feeling and we had the same musical interests. Uh, when and where did you first meet Boone, Mark and Mike? Uh, late 1979, I flew from Paris to perform M's pop music uh, at uh, Top of the Pops and Phil was on drop drums. John Gould, uh, Phil's brother, was in charge of promoting the single at uh, MCA. Um, I, would then, I stayed at his place and eventually met Boone and then went on to meet both Mark and uh, Mike. How does it feel, this was from Andrew McGregor, how does it feel to be part of a band that still has a hardcore fan base and still fills auditoriums today? It's a thrill, uh, given that back in those days we were far from imagining how each step in the development of the band would be uh, ever-growing value as years went by. How that success we just felt lucky to be enjoying back in the days would transfer into transform into a value that the whole of a generation of people in the UK and around the world uh, would share and recognise soundtracks that um, in their childhood and would have an effect on their lives. Um, did you, do you tour as Wally Badru? I started just four years ago for reasons too many to explain. Um, I do enjoy it now, now that technology allows me to do it the way I couldn't have ever dreamed to do it decades ago. Um, I intend to resume after COVID-19 um, and there is a project, um, I think, oh that will come a little bit later. Uh, Paul Pound said, who are your mentors? Now there's quite a long list Paul, but it includes James Brown, Count Basie, Aretha Franklin, Stevie Wonder, Herbie Hon Hancock, and I said the, the list <laughs> goes on, um, Cecilia Cruz, um, John Williams in movies, and as I said, there's quite a long list there. Uh, Robbie wanted to know, did you ever tour with, with Level 42? And unfortunately, the, I know the answer to that, it's never. Um, although obviously the gigs that um, Wally's doing current, or has been doing with both Mike and Phil, you will find on my channel. I've, I've posted near enough every, every track from it. Um, Right. I, uh, so I never dreamt of doing it, uh, never thought it would be significant for, the, for they really enjoyed being on stage and uh, back in those days. Um, I didn't, uh, for, for the better, since they uh, proved themselves to be the Fantastic Four. Um, Keith Riley wanted to know what's the most defining moment in Wally's career? Um, I believe doing their first self-titled debut album. Possibilities were at their peak. We just had to explore, investigate, pick, pick our chosen paths and assert. Nothing could have been far apart from Love Games, June Tune and Heathrow, for example. Not just in terms of tempo or writing, but in genre. Uh, Bjorn Jepsen, will you release another solo album? 
Sure, it's happening right now. Um, it's uh, called the Ongoing Un Unnamed Trilogy. And I have actually seen some tracks on this on YouTube. So I know that um, although the whole album's not out, you can actually go and find it. If you look up Wally Badru's own uh, YouTube channel, you will find some of the tracks already on there. Uh, Pam Foster wanted to know, how did you your collaboration with Level 42 actually start? Um, but again, we, he says, soon after we got introduced to each other by Phil Gould, um, I was invited to lay down some keys on the tracks that they were recording, uh, which was produced by Andy Soika on Elite Records. Um, they barely had a name yet. Um, music I liked, mu musicians I really appreciated, um, both personally and professionally. The tune uh, that started uh, all started with Love Meeting Love the start of the big journey. Michael Payne wanted to know what's his favourite Level 42 memory. Sitting back in the control room after engineer and co-producer Julian Mendelssohn finished mixing Something About You and thinking, gee, well we might have a single after all. After we had spent, so, uh, spent time, extra time and extra energy trying to write one from scratch, convinced that we had nothing, Julian's mix just opened our eyes on what we had. The sense of relief was huge, um, but we were far from realising that the success of the song would eventually propel the band to much higher levels. Uh, Gordon Cooper, what's your favourite Level, Level 42 song that you were involved with? I can dance to seven days uh, uninterruptedly, oh sorry, <laughs> I can dance to seven days uninterruptedly for hours. Phil's drumming is irresistible invitation to Mamba. Uh, Amanda Hodgkinson is commonly known as the fifth member of the group. Why didn't you tour with them? Well, technically that's been answered already, but I never was an adamant st uh, stage performer. Um, they truly were a fantastic four-piece. Four and at the time, my ongoing contract with Barclay Records and then Island Records actually forbade me to join any band officially. Hmm. Um, Keith Finham wanted to know what would you have done if you weren't a musician? I would have been an engineer in aviation or aerospace. Music only took over when I realised my maths was, <laughs> was not meeting the re requirement. And lastly, Raymond Pursued um, wanted to know what's your favourite album and why? Now, he hasn't got one, Raymond. There's, he said basically there's too many influences to narrow it down to one si simple um, album or, or, or actual um, artist. Guys, I know it's a little bit different from the other two interviews, but I hope the information contained in there. Wally, thank you for your time as always. And I have to tell you, the, bearing in mind Wally's a French man, I don't know whether he, he tra gets translation or, uh, to do these things, but the other, the other emails I've always received from him, he's, he actually speaks better English than I do. Uh, thanks for watching once again. Uh, bye bye everybody, bye bye. Eight minutes.